Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdell here again. In this presentation I'm going to continue my series of videos that give a gentle and basic introduction to vectors. And in particular, in previous videos we've been looking at how we can connect vectors with lines and vectors with planes. So in this presentation I'm going to do an example of um, uh, connecting vectors with equations of planes. And um, in particular, we're going to go from a Cartesian form of a plane to a parametric vector form of a plane. So let me um, share my screen with you and uh, I'll show you the example. So here it is. We are given the following Cartesian equation of a plane. I'll give you a picture of that in a minute. And we're asked to do two things. Essentially, they're the same thing, but firstly you're asked to determine a parametric vector form of the plane and then you're asked to identify two non-zero and non-parallel vectors that are parallel to the plane. Okay, so how do we do it? Well, in previous videos we talked about the equation of a plane. So um, down here is the Cartesian form of a plane in say n dimensions. Here we've got the Cartesian form in three dimensions where A1, A2, A3 and D are just numbers or constants. And this is the vector form, the parametric vector form. Here A is the position vector of a point that lies on the plane. V1 and V2 are two vectors that are parallel to the plane but not parallel to each other and not both zero. And if you add these all up, you get this vector, a parametric vector form. So let me just give you a, a, a sort of a brief sketch here. Suppose this is my plane, okay? And I know a point on the plane. And I know, say, a vector or two vectors that are both parallel to the plane and they're not jointly uh, parallel to each other, right? I can sort of draw the origin in here if you like. Okay, so to get to any point on this plane, all I have to do is basically get to A and then use V1 and V2 or scalar multiples of them and, and uh, adding them together to get around the whole plane. Okay? So that, that's pretty much why this is the why this is the form because basically two vectors that are non-zero and non-parallel span a two-dimensional set, which will be a plane, and to get onto that plane, I just need to get to A. So that's why the A is there. Okay. So what do we need to do here? We need to determine a parametric vector form of the plane. So how do I do that? Well, we um, want to introduce some parameters, the lambda ones and the lambda twos here are parameters. They're just real numbers, or well, they vary over the real numbers, and they're just known as parameters. So let me show you how to do this problem. It's not a, a difficult problem. And then I'll, at the end I'll show you how to easily create a uh, some nice graphics associated with the, uh, the plane in question. So I'm going to let lambda 1 equal y, and I'm going to let lambda 2 equals z. Now the first question is why did I make that equal y and that equal z? Why didn't I let lambda 1 equal x and lambda 2 equal y? Well, you could do that. It wouldn't be wrong. It would, you'd still be right. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more later about why I've made those particular choices and it's just for convenience. Okay, so let's call this uh, star. Let's rearrange that and make x the subject. Okay, so if I do that, let's say uh, I move the 3y and the negative 2z to the other side. And what I'm going to do is express these in terms of the lambda 1 and the lambda 2. So 4 minus 3 times lambda 1 uh, plus 2 times lambda 2. Okay, so let's take these, the x, the y, and the z, and write them as a vector, because we're looking for a parametric vector form here.
So let's write the x, y, z as a column vector and write the respective sides of these three things in the column. Uh, so x is 4 minus 3 lambda 1 plus 2 lambda 2. Uh, y is just lambda 1 and z is lambda 2. Okay, so it's starting to look a little bit like these sort of vector things here. So here would here I can write this as being the vector x, y, z. And what I would like to do is actually break this up. So break this up into three parts. So one sort of constant vector, then lambda 1 times another vector, plus lambda 2 times another vector. Okay, so I want to break this up into three parts. So the first thing I'm going to do is look for all the constants in each component. Okay, so if I look in the first component, I've got a 4. In the second component, I've got no constants. And in the third component, I've got no constants. And write that as a vector. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is look for all the lambda 1s in each component. Okay, I can bring that out the front. So let, there's, there's negative 3 lambda 1s in the first component, there's 1 lambda 1 in the second component, and there's 0 lambda 1s in the third component. Now just check, if I put that back in there and back in there, I should get that, that, and 0 down there, which is what I get. Lastly, let's do it on the lambda 2. Okay, I'm going to look at all the lambda 2 terms in the first component. There's a 2 lambda 2 there. There's 0 lambda 2 components in the second component, so I'd put a 0. And there's 1 uh, lambda 2 component in the uh, lambda 2 term in the third component. And again, if I um, multiply in here, I should get 2 lambda 2, 0 lambda 2, which is what I get. Now, a good check here is to actually just see if this, when put back together, equals this. It should do. Okay, so 4 plus negative 3 lambda plus 2 lambda 2, that should be the first term. 0 plus 1 times lambda 1 plus 0 lambda 2, that's the second term, which it is. And 0 plus 0 times lambda 1 plus 1 times lambda 2 should be the third component, if you like. Okay. So there we have it. That is a parametric vector form for our given plane. Okay. Now we've sort of already done two, uh, the second part, identify two non-zero or non-parallel vectors that are parallel to the plane. Well, we want to pull out that vector and that vector. Okay, but let's just write it down anyway. They ask us for it, so let's do it. Two non-zero and non-parallel vectors that are parallel to the plane are these two vectors here. Now let's just check that they I mean that's definitely non-zero. That's definitely non-zero because the uh, a zero vector has all zero components, right? Are they non-parallel? Well, there's no way that you can make this vector out of a multiple of that vector and vice versa. And the thing that gives that away is there's a zero here and a zero in some other um, uh, component, okay? And, and corresponding non-zero entries in the other ones. Okay, so let's just sort of write these down and then we're finished. Okay, and you could say our oh, point on that is uh, 4, 0, 0. Okay, so a pretty easy um, question, but let's go back to why I made these choices up here. Okay, and I said the, cho the, the reason was for convenience. If um, no, you can see that there's only a 1x here, right? The coefficient of x is 1. So when I rearranged it, I didn't have to divide by anything to make to get x on its own or to get x as the subject. If I had made, say, x equal to lambda 1 and y equal to lambda 2, when I rearranged this to make z the subject, 
I'd have to divide by that negative 2. So that means there'd be sort of divisions by a half or negative 2 in, 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 uh, in here. I guess that's just a cosmetic um, uh, reason for me. But you can, you can, as long as you let lambda 1 and lambda 2 be any of the two variables here, then you come up with a parametric vector form. Okay? All right, so let me just show you uh, a picture of this and a, and a neat way of generating um, uh, pictures in uh, three dimensions. Okay, so let me just share my screen. Okay, here we go. All right, so now I've, Google has um, uh, sort of graphics um, plotting capabilities now. So what I've done here is I've actually taken the equation of the plane that I was given and made z the subject. Okay, so if I make um, z the subject and just rearrange it, everything, I get z equals negative 4 plus x plus 3 times y all over 2. Okay, so um, what happens if I type that into a search? Well, you'll see down here, here is a graph for that plane. Okay, now let me just see if I can pause it and give you a little bit more insight into it. Now, the beautiful thing about this is that there's, uh, it's very easy, just do a Google search for the actual function right? and it plots it for you. Okay, so the, this colourful set of points here is part of the plane that we were given. This um, grey sort of shaded region is the, the plane, the uh, xy plane, so the plane z equals zero. So you can see it cuts in, in a line and it has uh, this sort of two-dimensional um, uh, surface lying in a three-dimensional space. So using Google now to plot these curves is super simple. Okay, so that's a basic example going from Cartesian uh, equation of a plane to a parametric vector form. By the way, uh, parametric vector forms are not unique for equations of planes. For example, um, you, know, you may um, calculate a parametric vector form of a plane and your friend or one of your um, fellow students may do the same and you may get different looking answers. In fact, there are an infinite way of um, uh, writing down a parametric vector form for the equation of a plane. Okay. Now, in, in um, forthcoming videos, I'm going to do some more examples. And then after that, we'll talk about how to multiply two vectors together, which is something that we haven't really chatted about, why it's useful, and, and why you would want to do it. Okay, so please join me for those presentations in the future. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments, put them in the comment section. Thanks again.